Hey, what's up guys? Today we have an addition to our series lineup. Because of the comments from our Studebaker parts 1, 2, and 3 lacking trucks, we decided to create a series to solely highlight the trucks by manufacturers. Hence the title series, Nothing But Trucks. Our truck history videos will now be more about the overall history of manufacturers while still highlighting key trucks in their history, and then this series will cover all the trucks that a manufacturer made. With that being said, let's get into episode 1 of Nothing But Trucks. Studebaker didn't start making trucks until 1929, and they started with their GN series that lasted only one year. However, I could not find any information or legit pictures on these trucks. If you know anything on this series or have pictures, please comment below what you know and leave a link so we can all see. After the GN series, they went on to their S series that began in 1930 and ended in 1934. Studebaker purchased a controlling interest in the Pierce Arrow Company in 1928. Pierce Arrow was best known as a manufacturer of luxury automobiles, but also produced small numbers of relatively expensive trucks. In late 1930, Studebaker announced production of its 1931 S-Series trucks, with capacities of 1.5 to 3 tons, plus a dictator passenger car-based half-ton model S1. The larger trucks were powered by the Studebaker 205 cubic inch 70 horsepower Studebaker 6 engine. The S1 used the 114 inch dictator chassis with a 221 dictator engine. Larger S-Series truck wheelbases ranged from 130 to 165 inches. A new subsidiary, the Studebaker Piercero Truck Corporation, was established to consolidate all truck production under one unit. By 1932, the depression was in full swing, and Studebaker was in financial trouble. A complex series of transactions was developed to raise cash. These involved Studebaker merging with White Motor Company, a major manufacturer of medium and heavy-duty trucks. This merger was blocked by some of White's stockholders, and Studebaker was eventually forced into receivership in 1933. White took over Pierce Arrow's truck division. Pierce Arrow itself went out of business in 1938. A total of 7,538 S-Series trucks were built between August 1930 and March of 1934. The majority were built in South Bend, but a small number were also assembled at the Studebaker plant in Walkersville, Ontario. These S-Series trucks included the 1930 Studebaker Wrecker S-Series, 1931 Studebaker S-Series Military Coach, 1931 Studebaker S-Series School Coach, 1931 Studebaker S-Series Tank Truck, 1932 Studebaker S-Series Tractor Truck, 1933 Studebaker S-Series Tank Truck, 1933 Studebaker S-3, the 1933 Studebaker S-8, and several others. After the S-Series, they moved on to the T-Series and the W-Series that lasted from 1934 to 1936. Both of these series I couldn't find much information on. If you have any information on the T-Series or the W-Series, please leave a link below. But here's a look at a 1935 Studebaker T-265 bus and a 1935 Studebaker 1W8 dump truck. After the T and W series came the J series in 1937. The J series only lasted one year, but what came from the J series turned into the Studebaker Coupe Express line that went from 1937 to 1939. From the J series came the 1937 J5 Express Coupe. Having retooled its entire lineup in 1936, Studebakers for 1937 received a streamlined facelift for which famed industrial designer Raymond Lowy was responsible. In addition to a more pointed grille and alligator hood, opening from the front, and extended hood louvers were added to what was already a handsome automobile. A new model was added too, called the Coupe Express. This dual purpose vehicle offered passenger car comfort and three passenger seating in a commercial car that offered greater hauling capacity than the typical business coupe of the times. In reality, Studebaker foretold the coming Ford Ranchero and Chevrolet El Camino pickups, 20 years ahead of its competition. The unique model was manufactured from January to July 1937, with just 3,125 built. While the series ended that same year, production for the Coupe Express continued through 1939, with just over 5,000 in total of the stylish pickup produced. Here is a look at a 1937 Studebaker J20M Sweeper. The Studebaker Coupe Express was a combination of Studebaker passenger car styling to a full-size truck bed. The 1937 to 1938 Studebaker Coupe Express successfully melded car-like comfort and styling with pickup stamina and utility. From the cab forward, the 1937 to 1938 Studebaker Coupe Express pickup was much like Studebaker's Dictator Coupe, but behind the passenger cabin sat a double wall pickup box capable of hauling up to half a ton. Advertising for the 1937 to 1938 Studebaker Coupe Express stressed its strong all-steel construction and roomy comfortable cab with passenger car appointments. 
For example, the seat, ceiling, and door panels were upholstered in cloth, and the seat back was adjustable. Dual wipers, sun visor, safety glass, and rear view mirror were standard, so were rotary door locks for safety and easier closing. Despite good looks, fine performance, and a workable combination of comfort and utility, sales of the 1937 to 1938 Studebaker Coupe Express were poor. Production of Studebaker Coupe Express peaked in 1937 at between 3,500 and 3,800 vehicles. 1938 saw only about 1,000 copies built. During the Coupe Express run, they also came out with the Studebaker K-Series that lasted from 1938 to 1940. Studebaker renamed its trucks as the K-Series for 1938. The rare K-10 fast transport came with the fully enclosed truck bed with the metal box. The K-10 was the big brother to the smaller and more common K-5 Coupe Express. Yet, the K-10 was Studebaker's smallest truck built on a full-size truck frame. The 1938 Studebaker truck is a splendid example of Lowy's early work. Most of the K-10 trucks were sold with a bare frame, later to be fitted with various types of flatbeds for different functions. The total production run was about a thousand units, of which only about a hundred were fitted with the wide metal box at the factory, as seen on this picture here. Here's also a look at a 1938 Studebaker K-15 tow truck, a 1938 Studebaker K-30 fire engine, and the 1938 Studebaker K-25 military truck. After both the Coupe Express and the K-Series lines were discontinued, the Studebaker M-Series was up next. The Studebaker M-Series had a couple stints in production, the first one being from 1941 to 1942, then later on from 1945 to 1948. The M-Series Studebaker trucks came in several versions, both pre- and post-World War II. The M5 was a half-ton pickup. The M15 was a three-quarter ton version. The M15A was the one and one and a half ton version. These three came with the Champion 169 engine only. The M16 one and a half and two ton versions came with the more powerful Commander 226 engine. The M-Series sported a more aerodynamic shape than most trucks of the time, with easily recognizable wind-wing vents on the driver and passenger windows, a feature not found on any other make of American truck during World War II. When Studebaker introduced the M-Series pickup truck in 1941, the company used the Coupe Express name in advertising for a time. No M-Series trucks were ever officially designated as the Coupe Express though. Here's a look at the 1936 Studebaker 2M, 1941 Studebaker M-Series milk delivery truck, the 1947-1948 M5 pickup, the 1941 Studebaker M15 refrigerator truck, the 1948 Studebaker M15A, and the 1946 M16. During the same time, they also built the Studebaker US6 military truck and the Studebaker M29 weasel during the war. We covered these a bit in part 3 of Studebaker history. Once the M-Series ran its course, Studebaker wasted little time with their next series, the 2R series. The M-Series was Studebaker's first crack at a dedicated light truck. All previous attempts had been passenger cars with cargo beds. Right up until the end of production, the M was a breadwinner for South Bend. In 1947, the company built 23,377 M5s, surpassing the total of all motorized commercial vehicles produced by Studebaker during the years before World War II. The upright look of the Studebaker M5 was gone, replaced with a rounded, streamlined look, somewhat reminiscent of GM's advanced design rigs, but somehow more modern. One of the truck's most dynamic styling cues wasn't added by designers, but rather subtracted. There was no exterior running boards or steps on this truck, neither beneath the doors nor at the front of the bed. Further distinguishing the two R's, they shared no body panels with Studebaker cars, though bits and pieces were swiped from the parts bins, headlamp rims, and a hood ornament from the Champion, as well as hubcaps from the Commander. Finally, to ensure that the bed's streamlined look remained dent-free, the sides were double-walled, a standard design in years to come, but unusual in the late 1940s. Here's a look at a 1949-1953 Studebaker 2R10, a 1950 Studebaker 2R5 pickup, a 1951 Studebaker 2R17 flatbed. After the 2R in 1953, the next year came the Studebaker 3R, and it only lasted for one year, and it was essentially a 2R with most of its changes being cosmetic, with a one-piece windshield and a new grille. Take a look at this 1954 Studebaker 3R pickup. The following year, Studebaker came out with the E-Series. The E-Series began production in 1955 and went until the very end of all vehicle production for Studebaker. Studebaker E-Series really just means all Studebaker trucks built between 1955 and 1964. During that period, Studebaker would come out with the Studebaker Transtar from 1956 to 1958, then again from 1960 to 1964, the Studebaker Champ from 1960 to 1964, and the Studebaker Zip Van in 1964. There was the 2E in 1956, 3E in 1957 to 58, and so on until the 8E models marked the last Studebaker pickups that were sold in 1964. Styling was a mix of carried over sheet metal from the 1949-53 2R series and the 1954-3R series. 
1955 was also the first year an 8-cylinder engine option was available for the Studebaker's lightest hauler. The 180 horsepower, 259 cubic inch V8 was paired with a 4-speed manual transmission. A 6-cylinder was the standard engine. The Transtar name was first introduced for the 1956 2E series model year in half ton, 3 quarter ton, 1 ton, 2 ton, and 2 ton heavy duty capacities. The Transtar name continued to be used on most of the 1957 to 58 3E series trucks. Though a stripped down Studebaker Scotsman model without the Transtar name was introduced in the 1958 model year. The Studebaker Champ was a light duty pickup truck designed at a time when Studebaker's truck line had not seen major upgrading in over 10 years. The company, which had endured the years of declining sales, was forced to use a number of existing components. The chassis and cargo box of the Champ were basically the same as what had been used for the Studebaker's half and three quarter ton trucks since 1949, but the cab section was very different. An entirely new cab was out of the question because of cost considerations, but the new Lark compact car's body proved to be just the right size and shape to suit the purpose. The engineering staff took a four-door sedan, cut it in half behind the front doors and modified the front half slightly to fit the truck chassis. The only new sheet metal stamping that was required was the back wall of the new cab. Minor modifications for mounting of the cab to the 1949 vintage truck frame were also made. The Champ is rarely given credit for introducing a feature that is nearly universal among today's pickup trucks. The sliding rear window, which was available from the start, proved to be quite popular among Champ buyers. It was truly one of Studebaker's better ideas, and caught on later among the major truck makers. Lastly, the Studebaker zip vans. The cab over engine zip vans were right-hand drive. There was a sliding door for the driver and no door on the left side. The tailgate door went up and down like a garage door. The keystone grill symbolized the nickname of Pennsylvania. The vans have two gas pedals. One was used when sitting and the other is used when standing. The turning radius is 19 feet 7 inches. Creature comforts consisted only of a heater and adjustable seat that allows lots of legroom. The Studebaker mail trucks were dubbed zip vans because it was on July 1st, 1963 that the US Post Office first used zip codes for mail distribution. The zip van was nothing more than an assemblage of aging Studebaker truck components on a flat square body supplied by another manufacturer. Here's a look at a 1956 Studebaker 2E pickup, a 1957 to 1958 Studebaker 3E Transtar Deluxe pickup, a 1959 Studebaker Scotsman pickup, a 1959 Studebaker Napco Deluxe pickup, a 1960 5E Studebaker Champ, the 1961 to 64 Studebaker Champ, and the Studebaker Zip Van. So there you have it guys, if trucks are what you wanted, then trucks you shall receive. Thanks guys for watching, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Before you leave, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and comment below, which Studebaker truck did you like? Guys, we still have February sales going on this month, and we have 10% off all in-store purchases, and if you sign up to join our Chrome Club, the discount gets bumped up to 15%. We also have 15% off grill inserts, 15% off stainless visors, $75 off classic style bumpers, 15% off train horns, set of 10 lug nuts 15% off, and free freight on all Roadworks exhaust products. If you want to stay up to date on new content coming your way, or just discuss all things Chrome, check out the Chrome Corner Wednesdays at noon with our host Dave Coleman. Thanks again guys for watching, I'll see you next time, and remember, if your rig don't shine, you don't know jack.